If you're new to Photoshop, a great place to start is looking at the brush tool. We use it for a lot of things, not just drawing, but all sorts of image manipulations inside Photoshop. So it's a really useful thing to look at and to start getting acquainted with. That's what we're going to do today, but we should first just quickly check that our workspaces are set up exactly the same. If yours looks anything different to mine at the moment, just go to Window, Workspace and click Essentials. If it still doesn't look quite right, just hit Reset Essentials and it will correct any deviations that we've got there and it will look exactly like you can see now. First thing we're going to do is have a look at very basic brush strokes. So if we open up the file called maze-simple.png inside Photoshop, then we'll see a little maze we're just going to try and complete. If you want to zoom in and you've got a trackpad, you can just pinch iPhone style to zoom. If you don't, you can use the magnifying glass at the bottom of the tools palette. The shortcut key for this is Z on your keyboard. If you click, you'll zoom in. If you alt click, you'll zoom out. So any combination of these to just get it broadly full screen. Now if we change to the brush tool, the eighth one down looks like a little paintbrush and the shortcut key for this is B. We'll be able to paint and do brush strokes inside here. I'm going to complete this in one stroke. Now if you go and make a mistake and hit a wall, just go to edit, undo brush tool or hit command Z or control Z depending on whether you're Mac or PC. Just go all the way through with your mouse or trackpad and see if you can get to the end without hitting a wall. There we go. Looking at that line now, drawing with mice and drawing with trackpads has a certain kind of feel that we get on how the stroke is realized on the page. If you can see there's some moments where it's very straight liney vertically and horizontally. That's kind of a behavior that we do by default with mice. So you can see it's a little bit unnatural and dehuman around here and it's a little bit wobbly and repeating in some other places. If you want a cleaner brush stroke you can look at things like graphics tablets and I'll quickly redraw this with a graphics tablet so you can see the difference in terms of stroke quality. There we go. Firstly, much quicker and easier to do. I'm still a bit wobbly, but you can see it's curvy and human feeling. And if you want that sort of feel to your brushwork, then a graphics tablet might help potentially. Wacom do the best ones. They've got loads of ones up available on their website. Now we'll look at something a little bit more complicated. If we open up the file enviousface.jpg, then we've got a partially completed drawing where half his face is missing inside the oval that is his head. It'd be nice for us to complete this so again we'll just zoom in a little bit so either with the zoom tool or with your trackpad so we can see the whole face. And We're just going to try and complete the image over here. So we're still on the brush tool, we're still drawing and if we make a stroke then we'll see it looks a little weird compared to what we have on the other side. Well for one thing it's very very fat and it's also faded at the edges or feathering into the white around it. It doesn't look like the type of line we've got on the left hand side. So this is where we start looking at our kind of parameters up at the top. At the moment the lines are drawing like this. But we don't want that kind of stroke, we want something similar to this. Up at the top we can see a little disclosure triangle with a 13 written next to it and a little dot. If we click this it shows you different types of brushes that we can use. I'm not going to get into any of these more complicated ones today but you can see the first two here have a different kind of shape to them. This one fades off into the distance and this one remains solid till the end. If we click the solid one then it has a much harder edge which will be much closer to this kind of harsh cartoon edge that we've got here. So this might be something that we want to use. If we drop the size down as well to something more like 6 pixels, 8 pixels, then you'll notice it's a lot easier to get stuff closer to what he's drawing over here. So if we go for something more like 
three, four pixels and try and draw stuff to complete the same stuff on this side for the eye. Then we might have a neater look. Now, if we make a mistake like this rather wobbly line underneath, we might want to go back. But if we do what we did earlier of undo or Control Z, Command Z, then you'll notice you only go back one step and then you'll go forwards. This is because designers like to be able to easily A and B to see the difference between something. If you want to go back more than one level of undo, then just go to edit, step backwards, and it will take you through the steps of drawing that you've made. Again, the shortcuts for this vary on Mac and PC, but Alt Command Z, otherwise you will find edit, step backward, the equivalent for PC written just there. So we can try and draw this line in with this harsher brush just around here. Don't worry about being super neat, I'm just using this as practice, try and get closer. Don't need to be super neat, we're just doing a little bit of practice drawing. If you're still finding it a bit harsh, we can go down even further, two pixels, got a nice harsh edge. Say you wanted to change a little thing like this on the eye, we have a heavy line here where we should have a slightly thinner line. What we don't want to do is go back through all our stages of undo. So we could use the eraser tool. If we imagine the paintbrush is working like our pencil now, then this can be our rubber. So we can use this to go through and just remove these little parts of the line to get rid of it so that we can redraw something a little bit slimmer. We'll go back to our brush tool and we'll be drawing again. Again, for some of the other lines, you're going to have to make the brush a little bit smaller. We can keep going up here to grab our different types of stroke and our different sizes, or if you control click inside your canvas, then you'll see you get access to the same menu. And this is a really useful shortcut. So control clicking when on the, br the brush tool will bring up all your different brushes. So here we can go for something a little bit smaller. We'll try it with one pixel, it's probably too small. Try it with two pixels and hopefully there we go. So complete the other side of the nose roughly. We'll do the little bit under the chin. And if you want a perfectly straight line, like the mouth just down here, you can hold down shift while drawing and you'll be able to draw in a straight line across. So there we go, not a million miles off, just a good bit of practice for you to see if you can get roughly the same brush stroke on the right hand side as there is on the left hand side by changing your brush size, changing the hardness and seeing if you can simulate and roughly copy. What we'll have a look at just to finish on the brush basics is how you select colour. If we go over to multiple tweets, then we've got a lovely little image here of multiple Twitter birds with one kind of flying to approach the line up here. If we imagine we want to get rid of this bird, what we can't do is erase it because it will erase and just leave white. What we need to do is kind of paint over it instead. So we need to know how to select colour because I would like to paint over it with this blue from around here. On the left hand side at the bottom of your tools palette you will see your foreground colour and background colour. At the moment this should be set to black and white. If you click them you'll be taken inside a colour picker dialog box where we have the ability to change things like hue and saturation. If I go and make my best guess by just sliding through the blue around here to something that I think will be a reasonably close match of the sky and then go across so that we've got full saturation by dragging this to the right hand corner then 
I'll just draw over the bird and see how close we were. Well, it's not a million miles off, but it's clearly not the same colour. It is very difficult to eyeball this sort of thing. So instead of dialing through colours and mismatching for quite a while, what we can do is sample the background colours. We can do that with the eyedropper tool, which is just up here. And if we use this, we can sample any colour that we click on. However, it's quite irritating to have to switch to this tool. So whilst you're on brush tool, instead of doing that, you can just hold down alt and when you click now, you'll be sampling whatever colour it's over at the moment. So you can see I'm sampling white here and my previous colour was blue. And now I'm sampling blue and my previous colour was white. But if I sample the blue close to the bird and now paint over him, then the match in colour is flawless. We can do this to the other birds here as well. So this is how we do colour selection if we wanted a colour from inside this palette or if we wanted to match a colour we can sample it and then we can paint. So there we go. So try and remove the same birds that I've removed. You'll end up with a fairly seamless image. So that's the basics of the brush tool inside Photoshop. We now know how to select the tool, how to change the colour on the tool so we can have any colour of stroke that we want and also up at the top we know where we can grab the size so we can change size and hardness so we can have different types of strokes. So there we go. We'll come back to the brush tool later but it's the foundation of so much stuff that you do inside Photoshop that it's really useful you're spending a little bit of time just trying to get your head around how it works.